Hello everyone, Gilly here. In this episode of Less Than Enough Haskell, we're going to be exploring two or three different things. One of them is not strictly a Haskell thing, but it's still super interesting. We're going to be exploring a thing called Qualified Do, which is a relatively new language extension. We're going to be exploring embedded DSLs in Haskell, which I think goes really well along with Qualified Do. And last but not least, we're going to be exploring assembly language, which again, not strictly a Haskell concept, but how we represent it in Haskell is certainly an interesting um, concept, an interesting question. So what is this qualified do thing uh, and what are we actually striving to do today? Well, this sums it up pretty well. We are looking to make an assembly language, which is a little toy assembly language that I've contrived. And we want to be able to write the assembly language like we would write normal assembly language. It's just all uh, listed out instruction after instruction and it will get the job done for us. Um, we'll see some of the benefits of doing this as an embedded DSL in a later video, I imagine, but to make this work and not actually use a monad, we're gonna need to use this newer language extension called Qualified Do. And what Qualified Do does is basically it lets you under some module name define operators that look like the monadic operators and you can use do syntax without actually having a monad. So this is really nice because sometimes you want code that isn't as generic a monad. In other words, there's no A type that you're wrapping. There's no inner type to wrap. You just have some monomorphic thing, for example. Um, and B, like sometimes it's just a lot of overhead and you don't want to have to think about getting the laws right and everything. So this just gives you a nicer syntax, a more easy syntax to work with without having to worry about a lot of that hubbub that comes along sometimes with actually defining a monad. So what do we have here? Well, again, we have this little programming language that I've contrived called Enthusiasm. It's kind of a pun. Um, it's an enthusiast's assembly language, thus the Enthusiasm. So yeah, uh, we're gonna jump right in and we're gonna define this thing and Qualified Do will let us, you know, write it out like this. So that's pretty nifty, that's pretty nice. Um, of course, to use Qualified Do, we need to use the language extension for Qualified Do. And then, again, as I mentioned, you just need to put the actual operators in some other module. And then you need to reference the .do from that module, and that will inherit those things. So if we just try to run this as is, we'll do stack run. We fail because there's no export of carrot carrot or greater than greater than I mean in enthusiasm so we have to define that and then qualified do will let us use it and the actual type of it kind of matters but it doesn't super matter honestly so it's pretty 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 lax and pretty useful for us so let's go ahead and let's just hop over into this file oh, I didn't if I didn't mention this is fizzbuzz which is a famous programming interview question we're not going to actually run it in this video we are just going to print out the source tree for it, or a representation of the source tree. Uh, in a later video, we will execute it and talk more about what we might do with that. So this is very boring right now, but basically we've got to go ahead and define all of these things. So we're going to need a couple new types. We're going to need a register. And for this, we're just going to be really lazy and say registers are A, B, we'll say C, F, G, we'll just go through H. So we're gonna have registers through H. And let's be really careful about what we're exporting here. We're going to say these will never change. So we're just gonna export the actual constructors here to use directly as we did on the right hand side. And then what else are we gonna need? We're gonna need our actual instructions. So our instructions are going to be just all of these things over here. We're gonna make a type to represent them as well as these smart constructor functions. So let's just start with SETI. So SETI takes some intermediate value, which is gonna be an int, and it takes a register, and it just sets the register to that intermediate value you give it. Then we're gonna take, we're gonna do ADDY, which is gonna take an intermediate value in a register, and it's just going to add the value of, that of the register and the value of the intermediate value and store them inside of the register. Add er is going to be a little bit more complicated. It's going to take a register, another register, and it's going to output the result of adding them together into a third register, overriding whatever its contents might be. So now we're getting into the slightly more complicated ones. We need a jump, and this is jumpin', which 
I named because I'm saying it means jump, not zero. So it's going to take an int, which tells you the relative offset to jump. So if this got, if, um, or it's also going to take a reg, but it's going to check the register for a non-zero value. And if it's non-zero, it'll jump this many instructions away relative to itself. And if it is zero, it'll just continue on. So this would actually halt. Uh, we already have SETI. We don't have modder yet. So this is going to be a modulus operator, which takes a register, which is our numerator. It takes a register, which is our denominator. And then it will write to another register the remainder after dividing the numerator, numerator and the denominator. All right, we already have jump and now we're going to need our IO operations. So says is going to be say literal string. And to do that, we're actually going to use text. Okay, and then if we're doing that, um, Haskell's not by default going to know this is text. It's going to think maybe this is a string of some, some other kind. So we're going to do overloaded strings which should help Haskell uh, be a little more flexible about that. Okay, we're gonna need another jump, J-M-P-A, which is jump absolute, or in other words, just go to the line, go to this line number, go to this instruction number more specifically. So this would jump A1, would always go back to this because instructions are gonna start at zero, so this would be instruction one. All right, we already have SETI, we have modder, we have jump n, we have says, we have jump a. We have SETI, we have modder, we have jump n, we have says, we have jump a. Uh, we don't have says r yet. So says r, sayer, is going to take a register. That's going to say print the value of this register. And then, as we said, we already have says and we already have jump a or jump a. Yeah, so this is the idea. This is what we're going to actually use to represent this thing. But the actual instructions themselves need to be more complicated. Basically what we want to do is we're going to want to, in, um, to be able to evaluate this in a meaningful way, we're going to use a map to associate an instruction number with the instruction. And that'll just help us for cases where we want to jump. Um, for example, if we look at this as the jump A to one, this is going to have to change our evaluation to go to this point in the program. Um, we could, so, we could use a list and that would be a really simple way to represent this whole thing, but that would require a lot of consing and unconsing and going back to the beginning and unconsing to actually get to the point that we care to get to. And we don't really want to do that. So that being said, let's go ahead and let's start to talk about how we want to represent code in this language. So we'll do a new type and code is going to be something that we can uncode or we can take the, you know, take the wrapper off and it's going to be an m.map from an int to an instruction. And that's all it is. Like we said, it's going to associate an instruction number with an actual instruction. So let's go ahead and import qualified. That is not how you spell qualified multiple times over. Import data map strict. And yeah, that's good. Um, we're going to want to derive shell because we're printing this thing. Uh, that's gonna require us to drive show on this. It's gonna require us to drive show here as well. Nothing too crazy. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna need some way to actually lift some of these, or we're gonna need some way to construct these as code, basically. And that's what these functions are for. And that's why we're using smart constructors here. We don't wanna use these directly because um, then we will lose the concept of position in this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically add, let's see, what do we have here? We have a bunch of, we have a unary, we have a couple of unaries, we have a couple of binaries, we have a couple of functions that take three. So we'll do one is a thing that takes an instruction and its value and it returns back code of M singleton from zero and then it has inst of A. So that's how we are going to encode a unary operation. By default, everything is going to be instruction at location zero. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So two is going to be a function that takes an A and a B. Three is going to be an instruction that takes an A, B, and a C. It's a little tedious, but it's OK. It'll pay off. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to make these into functions. 
So, and we can get rid of the sum func thing that stack generates for us. So what we can do is we can go like this, and we can down case, oh, we can down case region. Will, will this work, I wonder? Yep, okay. So that's gonna be, this is a, um, this is a binary function, so it's gonna be two SETI. This is going to be three, a function that takes three addy, three adder, two jumpin, one jumpa, three modder, one says, one um, reg or uh, sayer, sayer. Okay, and oop, Addy, uh, this is a two, not a three. So our compiler is helping us out along the way, of course. And we're just going to export all of these. <clears throat> okay. And that should actually be some of the basics that we need. I mean, we're not there yet because we still don't have a way to combine these. We still don't have that greater than greater than operator. Um, of course, we do need to add a couple packages to get this to work. We need text and we need containers because we're using maps. Okay, not in scope, um, enthusiasm bind, not in scope, or not bind, but the then operator. Okay, yeah, there we go. So everything's working, except we haven't exported the operator we need to export. So let's figure this out. Um, for one thing, we're gonna have to export something that conflicts with something that's in Prelude. So we're gonna actually hide, hide the version that's in Prelude so we don't have a conflict here. But let's go ahead and look at what we're aiming for really quickly here. Let's see, um, here we go. So by default, I think we said that everything gets an instruction number of one, or I'm sorry, of zero. So if we have like, I don't know, add, addy, and it takes a five, and um, register A, we'll say. Um, this is gonna be instruction zero. And then if we have some other instruction that's just kind of taken in the blue, kind of with no other context, maybe it's like another addy, it's gonna add six to B. And we wanna bind these together, we wanna to chain these together with this. Well, in general, what that looks like is we're gonna keep everything on the left as it is, and we're gonna find the max index on the left side. So in this case, it would be zero. And we're gonna add one to it and add that to every key on the right side. So what this is gonna do then is it's going to essentially just change this to one and it's gonna squash these together in that map. So it's gonna make a map where there's these two keys. It's probably very confusing by my writing. Let's do a simplified example where I can actually write it all out. Let's just assume we have a couple of instructions that are already successfully bound together. So here's zero, here's one of A and B. And let's say we want to chain these or sequence these with another couple that are already bound together. So here's zero C, Here's one D. We're gonna find the max index over here. That's gonna be one. We're gonna add one to it. That's gonna be two. And then we're just gonna add this to everything over here and squash everything together in the same map. So this becomes two, this becomes three. And when we squash everything together in the same map, we get zero, A, one, B, two, C, three, D. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. That's what our chaining operator is going to be doing for us. And this might be monadic, I don't really know, and I don't really care, to be entirely honest with you. Um, this will work, and uh, I don't wanna have to think about it too much right now. So it's kind of the benefit, in my opinion, of doing it this way. So we're gonna export this thing. What is this thing called? I always call it then or um, bind with no value. I don't really have a great name for it. But anyways, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be taking a code on the left, we're gonna be taking a code on the right, and you know what, let's actually go ahead and give this a type signature, just so you can really see that this thing isn't monadic in any way. This is gonna take a code, a code, and a code. I guess this is actually a monoid in a way, maybe, but I don't care, again. <laughs> um, 
could be a mono, it could not. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, I said we're going to do a lookup max of the keys in the left. And if we get back some value, we don't care. Or if we get back some key, we don't care about the value. We'll do something. And if we get back nothing, this actually can't happen by construction because we've only hidden, we've hidden the only ways that you can construct these instructions behind these smart constructors. And these smart constructors always uh, put a singleton value in here. So they really can't be empty. So they should always return back a max. So this could be an error, but um, we will just... Actually, you know what? Let's make it an error. This should be impossible. Famous last words. Ha ha. He he. Um, yeah, I think that's a fair thing to say. Um, but now what we're going to do then is we're going to take the right side and we're going to do an m.map keys. And again, we're just going to add whatever the max key we found on the left was plus one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to squish those back into the into the um, map, and we've got to wrap this whole thing back up as code again. And there you have it. That's how we go ahead and give these things instruction pointers. So let's go ahead and let's run this and see how we did. Um, again, we're not actually evaluating anything here. We are just um, we failed something, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. We're not actually evaluating anything here. We are just printing the syntax tree. We'll get to evaluation at a later time. It looks like we forgot halt. Halt takes zero arguments, so we'll just go ahead and define it straight up. So halt is going to um, just be code m dot singleton. I think it's going to be our only um, zero. Let's go ahead and make sure we export it. Forgot to define that one. Okay, our tests compile, but if we go ahead and run this thing, what does it look like? Okay, we get something like this, and it might be a little bit hard to see, but it has in fact given us the kind of syntax list we would expect, right? Our syntax map, we would expect zero maps to the zeroth instruction, one maps to the next instruction, two maps to the next one, and we have 22 instructions in all if we jump to the end here. So. That's what we've got. Uh, maybe in the next video, we can go and actually run this thing and talk about different ways to evaluate it. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching.